Hello everyone, we will continue that topic authority check and in the previous video, we took another requirement and based upon that, we created the authorization field. We have not created the object class, we used the object class and we created the authorization object and we used the authorization field in the authorization object. Now, same to same, we are never, never supposed to do as a ABAP consultant. We are never supposed to do the fourth, fifth and sixth step. Yes, we need to just share or whatever the person who is handling everything, the person will share the authorization object with the particular value because value is very important because it should not be the case. We should need directly, we should clearly, clearly communicate to the SAP basis person that this user must be assigned with the payment mode value C. This user is assigned for payment mode D. This user must be assigned for payment mode N. So SAP basis person will create the role, pay, it will just assign the auth object to the role and role will be assigned to the users. So we'll simply, simply move on to the next step because as a ABAP consultant, our major, major target is to write the logic. So I will develop the program. I will write the code and in that program, then we will write the logic for the authority check. So I will go for creation of the program. Suppose I will write Z demo authority check. Suppose this is our second program. Suppose I will write underscore PM payment. Suppose I will say to display the order details based upon payment mode. Now I will go for simply type as executable program and I will go for save. I will save this as a local object. I will take a parameter for the payment mode. So I will simply go for parameter. I'm going for single input at a time. Suppose I will go for P underscore PM. Now I will pass that data element for the payment mode. You can check from the order header table. If I will show you order header table. I will go to the order header table. This is the data element for payment mode. I will activate. Now I will provide the selection text. Go to text elements. I will go for selection text and I will choose DDIC reference. Now, I will simply write a query to fetch that data. You all know whenever you are writing a query, the first thing you need to declare the internal table. If you know new syntaxes, yes, you can directly go for new syntaxes also because anyways, now we have a dedicated playlist available based upon the new syntaxes. Suppose what I will do, firstly, I will create a structure through type statement begin of LTY underscore data. Suppose from order header table, I will go for suppose order number, order date, payment mode. Suppose I will go for total amount. I will go for these four things. Order number, type, data element of order number. Now I will go for order date, Type data element of order date. Now I will go for payment mode. Type data element of payment. Now I will go for total amount. This is our total amount. 
do not confuse with these two extra fields of the, of the table. This is just I did the practices. I will end this particular structure. Now I will declare internal table and work area. LD underscore data type table of LT by underscore data. Now I will go for work area. Now we will write the logic. Now I will use the event start of selection. Why I am using start of selection? Because after some time I need to use add selection screen also because we need to validate the input. So yes, it's good that you will write the logic based upon the events itself. Because whenever you will click on to the execute button, start of selection event will trigger. Now I will write the query, select order number, order date, payment mode, total amount. We'll fetch from which table, order header table. We will store into internal table, into table, LT underscore data. Now I will go for where condition. You all know whenever you have parameter, you need to use equal to. So whatever input is on the right hand side, it will go to PM column of this table. It will fetch the data of these four column and data will come into this internal table. Now I will apply the loop. From the internal table, I will move it to work area. For every loop, there is a end loop. Now I will simply go for right statement. Work area hyphen order number, work area hyphen order date, work area hyphen payment mode work area hyphen total amount. Now I will check the syntax and I will activate. Now if I will run this particular program, suppose I am going for payment mode C, we are getting the result. So as of now, there is no authorization into this particular program. Now user is saying this program must be authorization based. Any user cannot display each and everything. If the user is authorized, only in that case, the user can display the records for a particular payment. So we will simply, simply go for writing the logic. So I will go for add selection screen event. You all know, yes, whenever you want to validate you need to write the logic as a part of add selection screen event. Now, what is the syntax? We'll simply go for authority check object. Authority check object. We will give the name of the authorization object which we created. Z auth PMD. I will simply use this Z auth PMD. Now, in this authorization object, we have two authorization field. Yes, one is ACTVT and one is your payment. So what I will do, how you will pass the authorization fields through ID. What is first one? ACTVT. Now, what is the value of that? How we will find pass the value through field and what is the value? Zero, three. You all know 03 is for display. If I will show you the authorization object, we have chosen 03. If I will go to authorization object, if I will go for this, you can simply see 03 is for display. Now we will go for second authorization field. What is our second authorization field? ID. What is the name of that authorization field? I'll check the name and I will simply, simply 
cup. This is PYMT mode. I will copy and paste. Now I will go for field. Now from where you are getting the value of payment code? From the screen itself. So we will simply simply pass P underscore PM. So it will check if you are going passing for C. So it will check in your user. Are you authorized for that authorization object having the payment mode value C? Are you authorized for having the payment mode value D? Are you authorized for having the payment mode value N? Because anyways, whenever the basis person will do all these things, it will pass the values at that time C, D, and N. Now I will simply go for if size sub R C not equal to zero. And if now I will create a message into the message class. Now I will go for message class and I will give a message. You are not authorized to display the records having payment mode. Now I will simply use M percent here. You all know because our payment mode is not fixed. It is coming from the screen. So we'll simply, simply replace this M percent by C, D or N, whatever you are passing from the screen, because you all know we can pass values to the message number through M percent. Now I will use this message into my program. I will write message. Message is the keyword. We'll go for error message. What is the number? 0, 1, 2. And what is the message class? ZMSG. With, because we need to replace this M percent with C, D or N. So what I will write, I'll simply write with P underscore P N. Now I will simply go for syntax check and I will go for ID A C T B T. I'll just see what the mistake I did. Okay, I'll just check the syntax. I, I think I did the mistake. I will go for the previous program. I think I need to pass in single quotes. This is the mistake I did. Yes, we need to pass in single quotes. Yes, this is the mistake which we are passing the authorization field name in the single quotes. We'll pass in single quotes. This is ACTVT. Similarly for this also payment. Now I will check the syntax and I will add. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we created the program based upon our requirement. Input is payment mode and I took the parameter. We have written the logic to fetch the data from order header table and we display the data. So as of now, there is no authorization check in the program. So now after that, we have written the logic for the authorization check as a part of add selection screen event. So what is the syntax authority check object name of the authorization object ID you can pass the name of authorization field and with the help of field keyword we are going for the value of that. Then we pass the second authorization field and we pass the value of that also. By mistake, I forgot to put the single quotes. Now I put the authorization field in the single quote. In the next video, we will understand this in the debugging mode because anyways, I do not have because this authorization object is not assigned to my user ID. So yes, we'll simply simply get the size sub RC other than zero. But you all know 
I have SAP all authorization. So I will simply regenerate and then show you the result also. So that part will continue in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.